on now and announce the beginning of the call. Welcome everybody <clears throat> to the Open Hearted Practice Group. It's um, Tuesday, April the 18th for some of us and Monday, April 17th for the rest of us. And uh, I'm Jim Mansky. I live in Maui and I'm usually um, joined by my sweetheart, Jory, as my co-trainer and supporter and vice versa. And uh, she's not uh, with us today. So um, she sends her regards and her, please send her some well wishes so that she feels uh, better quickly. I'm sure she'll be fine soon. And um, today's topic is called uh, com From Complaint to um, Commitment. And it's part of a series that we've been working on um, with, uh, for about relationships. And uh, so we'll explore that in detail. The way that we explore it is through practice. This is a, a practice group. So the emphasis here is not so much on lecture. I'll, I'll probably do some talking to introduce concepts and answer questions and so forth. But the bulk of the time that we spend together is with you doing either self-empathy work, uh, kind of working with yourself, maybe through some writing or journaling or answering some questions. And then there's also the opportunity to practice uh, empathy and honesty in small groups. Empathy means the listening part of nonviolent communication. Honesty means the speaking part. So those are the three different ways we can practice nonviolent communication through self-empathy, through um, empathy, and through honesty. So today we'll get a chance to practice all three of those in the context of um, relationship. Not just the kind of relationship that you might have with a partner, but all relationships. NVC for me is a very uh, relational model. It's designed to help us to um, have relationships that are resilient and uh, clear and fun and um, so forth. And also to empower you as a, as a creator of the, a co-creator of the relationships that you're in so that you can have as uh, you, you can learn to share your power with the people that you're relating to. So that's what we do here. Um, what you do here is whatever you want. You get to, to uh, participate at whatever level that you would like. So everything we do here is optional. Um, I do um, encourage you to do the practices and to do, uh, do the small groups. But for some of you, like I know at least one person on the call today is um, uh, in a, uh, you know, is not able to actually be in small groups. So they put an equal sign in front of their name. And that tells me not to put them into a small group. So if it doesn't work for you for whatever reason uh, to do a small group today, then just put an equal sign in front of your name. You'll end up going to a, a small group, but there's no expectation that you do anything in there, but it, you'll just be parked with some other folks that are uh, in the same uh, boat as you, so to speak. And <clears throat> so in a moment, we're gonna do some self-connection and we're gonna do it in the form of a, of a song um, one of the people that's been coming to the group lately is um, Happy Ron. Happy Ron is a musician and somebody that uh, ha has been coming to our practice groups probably for 10 or 15 years or something like that. When he comes, I always uh, request that he sing to us because he's, uh, he's got uh, some great um, NBC based songs. And so it's a wonderful way to, to practice getting in touch with our heart, getting clear on why we're here. So Ron, if you'd like, uh, why don't you start with a song and then um, I'll, I'll lead us into some um, reflection about your song. How does that sound? That sounds great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So this song I wrote about uh, five years ago when my girlfriend at the time uh, very suddenly left me and uh, it was done in a way that was quite uh, challenging and I had a decision, was I going to go into drama or was I gonna not do the drama thing so I decided not to do the drama thing and that's what this song is called not gonna shout and call you names I can never take back not gonna drink and rant and rave about all the things you lack 
things I'm not gonna do The drama thing I'm not gonna do The drama thing I could throw the memories into the fire And just watch them burn But I'd rather remember the good things we did And all that we learned I'm not gonna do the drama thing. I'm not gonna do the drama thing. My friends all say now that you and me are through, I should just get back at you. But that's not what I'm gonna do. Not gonna wreck the love we had. Not gonna be a hater. Gonna find out what I really want and go back to being a player cause I'm not gonna do the drama thing I'm not gonna do the drama thing welcome to life where we all get hurt that is plain to see so now it's time for moving on go back to being happy my name's Happy. I'm not gonna do the drama thing. I'm not gonna do the drama thing. I'm not gonna do the drama thing. True story. <laughs> Bravo. Very nice. <laughs> Thanks, thank you, Ron. So now, having heard that, just notice how your body responds to the song and to uh, Happy Ron's uh, presence and his willingness to sing for us. So tune into your own direct experience. Maybe it's helpful to close your eyes. That's totally optional. But just check your body for sensations. And also check your body for emotions that you might be experiencing. These sensations and emotions are what we refer to as feelings in nonviolent communication. And we learn that the feelings that we notice in our body are directly linked to the needs that we have. So if you follow the sensations in your body and the emotions in your body to your needs, what's important to you right now? What do you value? If you don't have any answers to these questions, that's fine. Just notice that. It might be brand new to these ideas. So just notice that. It's okay. We're all here to learn. So happy Ron Ron sang a song. We all were present for that song, unless you've arrived after the song. And then sensations and emotions emerged in our body because of the stimulus of Ron's song. And we felt those feelings because it touched some needs of ours. And as you settle into those needs more fully, appreciating that those needs exist, see if a request arises for you. 
A request is just another way of saying what would make your life more wonderful or what might contribute to the needs that you identified. And then as a final step in the exercise, just notice how you feel in this moment. Having had the experience of self-connection. And I've made some breakout rooms for you. Most of the rooms have uh, three people in them. Uh, there might be a group of two or four, depending on what happens after I push the button and open up the groups uh, and other people might arrive. And so what do you do in the small group? This is a chance to do the honesty and the empathy part of nonviolent communication. So <clears throat> we'll have 10 minutes in the small group. So about three minutes each to do the honesty practice. And by honesty, I just mean to speak from your heart about what your experience is so far, whatever is important to you to share in the moment. So maybe you talk about your response to Happy Ron's song or being here on the group or something else that's important to you. And do your best to talk about, um, uh, about it using nonviolent communication. Talk about what you see, hear, smell, taste, and touch, the observation, how you feel about it, what's going on in your body, what your needs are, what's going on in your heart, and then go on to the next person so that everybody has a chance to, to share. About three minutes a person. When I push the button to open the groups, you'll automatically go there, um, unless there's a little button on your screen that says, uh, if you wanna to go to the group, then of course push that button. And then when the group's over in uh, about um, 10 minutes, then you'll, when it's finally over, uh, you'll automatically come back here. No more button pushing required. And if you're just arriving now, I'll go ahead and make new rooms for you. It's so much fun to see all of you here today. And now that I open my eyes and, and kind of focus on, on looking at your faces, I just feel so happy to see you here and so curious about what we'll do together. So uh, we'll have nine minutes, we'll show up on your timer, then there'll be one minute at the end. So we'll see you all back here in 10 minutes. Oh, and please turn your camera on, if at all possible in the small groups. Please turn your camera on, it really supports a sense of connection and um, support for other people in your group. And uh, then you can, if you want to turn your camera off and come back to the main group here where the recording is, that's fine. But the stuff that happens in the small group is never recorded. And so um, please turn your camera on when you get to the small group. All right, see you back here in 10 minutes. Back on. All right, and here we are back in the big group again, all together. And I feel remarkably curious to hear how you're doing and any reactions or responses that you have so far to what's been happening. And Tanya is demonstrating um, what you do. If you'd like to be heard, you raise your hand. And if you don't know how to raise your hand, um, on the bottom of your screen, <clears throat> there's a little happy face in the word reactions under it, at least on the bottom of my screen. I don't know what's on the bottom of your screen. Uh, there's a little happy face. You click that, and then there's a little place there that you can raise your hand. And if that doesn't work or you can't do that, you can kind of go like this, and maybe, maybe I'll see you. Um, so go ahead, Tanya. What's up? So the uh, person that I was with was not a native English speaker. And uh, I would love for at uh, some point for Ron to sing his song again, because 
they missed the meaning of the song because they didn't understand the the meaning, the other meaning of drama other than being a play on a stage. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we straightened that out and they 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 enjoyed the song much better, but I'd love for Ron to play it again at some point. Okay, that's a great request. Thank you. And um, and thanks thanks for caring for your uh, pod mate there and and helping her to clarify a metaphor. You know, folks who don't speak English as their first language, you know, we think when we're you know when we're the uh, when we're speaking that everybody understands us just because we think everybody's like us, but it's not always the case. And so I'm very appreciative of your care, Tanya, for our friends who may not speak English as their uh, birth language. And Ron has put the words into the chat. So you can uh, check them out there as well. And uh, Carolyn, what's up? Oops, you need to click the unmute button on the lower left-hand side of your screen. Okay, yeah. So I I have a I have a um I guess I've said this before, Jim. <laughs> I have a request about, but this time it's a question. Um I wondered why. If, what the reason is that the breakout rooms are so short <laughs> because we missed one person completely and I guess we you know there's a little bit of time when you say hello and and we just you know did that for maybe a couple of minutes and then and then we had time for two of us and then boom it was over so yeah it's very short yeah I catch your regret that uh, you didn't get to hear from somebody in your uh, in your group, and you wonder what's behind the decision to only make it 10, 10 minutes long. And uh, yes. the answer is, um, um, for some people, 10 minutes is forever. And the idea of being in a, especially if you're brand new to NBC and being in a group for the first time, it might be just scary to be there for so long, uh, for more than 10 minutes. And so the first group is usually short, just to create a gentle introduction to small groups. And then the the we'll do at least hopefully one more. Um, or there's an intention to do at least one more small group today, and those tend to be between 15 and 30 minutes long. So there's more time to connect with people. I see. Answer your okay. question. Yeah. Yes. Great. And uh, Purva. Uh, hello from India. <laughs> uh, it was. Uh, I'm, uh, I just wanted to share that I'm joining after months and months, and uh, this gets to be a busy time in the morning, making breakfast, et cetera, in India. But I'm so happy I joined, and uh, thank you so much, Happy Ron, for the song. It completely lifted me up, and I've been writing a little bit of poetry off and on. And I, uh, you know, on WhatsApp, you can put your status, uh, like you can write a little line, so for today, my line is going to be, I'm not going to do the drama thing. <laughs> so I'm just so happy for this. And it was very lovely to hear the two people in our group. Uh, and it was interesting that each one of us were in different spaces, uh, mentally, emotionally. Uh, uh, so it was, I think it was just uh, another realization uh, to be empathetic to everybody's needs. Uh, you know, when you meet, everybody could be feeling something very, very different. Uh, like I was so uplifted, but um, another person was completely on the opposite spectrum, uh, was sharing a lot of disappointment and uh, was uh, not comfortable and stressed and somebody was there for a shared experience. So it was beautiful. So I'm, I'm happy to be back and uh, listen and learn and grow. So thank you so much for this, Jim. And definitely all said, uh, we are missing Jory. You're thank welcome. you. 
And I love that you moved your microphone away about a half of an inch of where it started. You're much clearer with it just a little bit further away. So that's great. Thank you. We heard I heard everything you said, but it was it just got a little bit clearer when it was further away. So thank you. <clears throat> and uh, Jeff. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to come in. I'm grateful to hear Happy Round sing. It's the second time I've had that experience. And so, uh, yeah, I'm grateful. Um, this group creates a safe place for me and my body finds a lot of rest and ease um, from my experiences in this, in this group. And um, that ease lent itself to me being able to look within because um, I'm in a broken relationship and can think about what drama means and in my particular situation right now. And I have a tendency to think that, you know, just being sad or just experiencing grief and mourning loss, um, that that's doing the drama thing. And so I was like, oh, I wish somebody could tell me if it's a drama. You know, I need to talk to Happy Ron and get the answer about what drama is. And this group being facilitated in the way that it has been tonight and other times helped me to look within and ask myself, like, are you being dramatic, Jeff? Are you doing the drama thing? Or are you having a human experience and um, feeling pain and being open to it and expressing it and all that? So I'm really grateful. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Jeff. You know, um, I, I really appreciate your insight there and that um, I wouldn't want anybody to go away from that song thinking they've done anything wrong ever in their life. That uh, drama is just kind of a fun way to talk about emotional expression. And what I take away from Ron's song is I have some choice about how and when I express my emotions. I don't have any choice about how other people do it unless I just stay away from them. But um, I have a little bit of control there, but I have more control about how I share and what I share and when I share and who I share it with and so forth. And so that's what I took away is a celebration of our autonomy and um, then mm -hmm. a chance to be compassionate for strong feelings and also to mourn that when I've been dramatic in the past, sometimes it doesn't get my needs met or contribute to the needs of the other person. Anything you want to say in response? Yeah, thanks for the encouragement that I don't have to do it right. Because that's a thing that I think a lot of times is that I have to do it right and I have to do it perfect. But I know the truth is I have to do it honestly and I have to do it respectfully of yeah. myself and the people. So, Amen. Thanks for reinforcing. You're welcome. I want to share with you uh, Marshall's reinforcement of that idea, <clears throat> which is that um, uh, what, what I heard Mark from Marshall uh, was that um, um, uh, the idea is not to try to do NBC perfectly. Nobody can do NBC perfectly. Believe me, I, I knew Marshall for many years. I did uh, about uh, 10 different international intensive trainings with him and several other trainings. And even the creator of Marshall of uh, nonviolent communication uh, would never have claimed to do it personally, uh, perf perfectly. And in, his advice was just to become progressively less stupid. <clears throat> and so that's Marshall's <laughs> way of kind of pointing to the to the humor oh, part of it just become progressively less stupid so that's my goal I'm, I share uh, I share Marshall's goal just to become a little more awake a little a little more intelligent with um, my choices how does that feel to you Jeff thanks I, I took my hat off to that notion I appreciate it thanks for sharing it Jim you're welcome and uh, Siva Well, I've spent most of the last few days reading another book. This, this is it. Can you just I'll say what read the name it is? In of course. It's called The Empathy Diaries. I highly recommend it. It's by Sherry Turkle. 
T U R K L E. This is a library copy, but today I bought my own copy so I can uh, mark it all up because it's almost every other page has something I want to remember and remember and remember. It's it's sort of a it's an it's an autobiography actually. So she's using her own self to demonstrate these principles of empathy. Cool. Well, thanks and, for the recommendation. And and uh, on the bottom it says author of reclaiming conversation. Could you share the uh, name of the author, please? Uh, so yeah, she's going to put it into the chat for us. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very good. And uh, so I think that clears the board of all the requests. I'm going to put these hands down and say, um, just check now how you feel. Now you've practiced NBC for 37 minutes and some of us even longer. Everything that we've done so far has been practice. So just to reflect for a moment on how you've been staying connected to yourself, connecting to your own body, to your heart, to your feelings and your needs. Just notice what it's like that this is a natural thing that human beings do is we stay connected to ourselves. And then sometimes we connect with other people through our honesty and through our empathy. So celebrate that you've been practicing no matter what you've done so far, you're practicing. And we're going to dive into um, some another another kind of practice here with a little bit of um, a background about what we're doing. And um, let me just move this one person into a group. By the way, you probably noticed that Jory is not here today. If you're just arriving, Jory is fine. She just was not feeling at the top of her game. And she, so she didn't think that she would, it would be helpful for her to be here. And um, I wanted to acknowledge her choice and her, her freedom to do what would contribute to her well being, which reminds me to give you guys the same advice that as we continue to go for another hour and uh, 20 minutes or so, that you take care of yourself during the call. So if you need to get up and stretch your legs, turn the camera off and, do some twisting, or if you want to lay down for a while, or do some push-ups, or whatever works for you, get a glass of water, or take care of any other needs, feel free to uh, follow your needs. That's practice, too. So please do take care of yourself. And let's. I'm going to share my screen with you now as we dive into the next step. <clears throat> We've been working on relationships all year explicitly. And um, this, this um, particular class today uh, is, was uh, stimulated by our class last week. It just seemed like the natural next step uh, in our exploration of how we can practice nonviolent communication uh, is, um, with, uh, is learning how to transform complaints into commitments. This is a very important part of, uh, of one of the skills we've been working on in relationships related to I'll work on me and you work on you. So this is a way of owning our own power and uh, also to support other people in owning their power and to be uh, collaborative with them. And so um, let's start with um, kind of a, a fun little thing we can do. Um, Jory and I call it a wine and G's party. Okay, so another word for complaining is whining in English. 
And geez is a word that's used to express frustration or things. Oh, geez, can't believe that's happening again is a common phrase in English. So we're going to have a, uh, and then of course, a wine and cheese party is a party where people get together and they drink wine and eat cheese. And so we're going to steal that, that phrase and have about a two minute wine and, G and cheese fall, uh, party. And so uh, when I give you the signal, I want you to unmute uh, your, um, your um, microphone. And then I just want you to complain. I want you to complain about anything that you want to complain about. And I want you to complain. Uh, this is your chance to actually be dramatic. Uh, no one's going to be able to hear you because there's going to be, um, you know, probably 30 other voices being said. And but you'll get a chance to express your complaints. So you complain about you can complain about the relationships that you're in. You can complain about your neighborhood. You can complain about the state of the world or whatever you want to complain about. And so uh, go ahead and unmute your microphone first. Excuse me. And this is going to be really chaotic. So you might want to turn your sound down just a little bit. And then uh, I'm going to start the timer and say, go, and then just start complaining. And uh, so on your mark, get set, yeah, well. go. I just can't. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. There's so much criteria. I'm hurting. 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 I'm
Yeah. Disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. So then opening your heart even more fully to your emotional experience, what need is alive in you when you're complaining like that? I put a needs list up in case that's a new thing for you. Those feelings are telling you that something is important to you. If you're feeling a sense of, of openness through the ventilation, it means that your needs were satisfied by that exercise. If you're feeling more constricted, tight, it might be an indicator of some remaining unmet needs. So some of the needs that I'm seeing here, the need to be heard, uh, freedom, rest, integrity, compassion, celebrate, to be heard. self-care. I was really struck. Uh, I've done this exercise several times, but I think it's the first time, at least in a long time, um, I have done it on Zoom. I can't ever remember doing it on Zoom, but it was quite a remarkable sound. It would be so interesting for you to, to listen to the recording later. It was, um, it was, um, very um, chaotic. I didn't hear anything that anybody said. And yet I knew that everyone was expressing something that was important to you. And as I tune into that, I feel sad. I wonder what was alive in you. I missed it. You know, I, 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 I mourn that I missed something that was vital to you. And I think that's what happens a lot in our everyday experience, because when we complain to other people, um, they might be complaining at the same time as us. I think that's what Ron's um, Happy Ron's song uh, points to you know, with the with the uh, metaphor of drama, that sometimes uh, um, it's like my mentor, uh, certified trainer uh, since 1989 is Krista Morph. She lives here in Maui. Uh, she's from Switzerland. But she calls it two deaf people talking. Two deaf people talking. And so no one's listening, but everybody's speaking. Might be even more accurate to say two people with their ears plugged, unwilling to listen to the other person. And so there's a lot that gets missed. And that's just with complaints. That's a pretty pretty low bar for drama because we can go beyond complaint. We can go to uh, criticism or blame, which is uh, even more intense to process. Or we can go to contempt to be on the receiving end of an enemy image, as we call it, in nonviolent communication. Extremely challenging to be present for. And yet that's what we're here to do is to learn first by how to become more and more present to complaints and stretch our emotional muscles, stretch our heart to open up, to hear the beauty behind the complaint. And then we're, as we continue to stretch our heart, we can become more um, willing to hear blame, criticism, an enemy image, whatever. So I pause there to see if there's any reactions or responses so far before we do the next practice. Love to hear from at least three people who haven't spoken yet. So if you have not yet spoken and you're willing to speak, 
it would be so rich for me to be able to hear your voice, even if it was just one word. So please raise your hand if you're willing to share what your experience of uh, is like so far with that exercise. Yeah, Aaron, thank you. Whoops, you need to unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. Good. It's like the Verizon commercial. Exactly. Can you hear me now? Um, so two Jeff people speaking to each other or uh, two people plugging their ears. Yes, uh, th those words resonate with me. And there's a certain irony in that. So um, I'm present to that irony that the, when I complain and I imagine when others complain, they really wanna be heard, but it, uh, can decrease the odds of having that need met when I and others express themselves in in a complaining kind of way. Complaining kind of ways no. decreases the odds. Doesn't doesn't make it impossible, but no. you're right. Yeah, it decreases the odds. I like the way you put it. It makes it more difficult for us to get our needs met sometimes when we um, come from that quality of energy of complaint. Is that complete for you, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking, I mean, sometimes the complaining gets some reaction, whereas not complaining doesn't get any reaction. And then like, then there's something to work with. Like, maybe that's kind of the hope that people have, like get, get some movement at least, and then there's something to work with. Um, but it'd be nice to, get that movement without the side effects, so to speak, right. the unwanted side effects. <laughs> right. Yeah, so you notice that sometimes complaining might actually help to get our needs met, but it, come, it might come with a cost. Yeah. An extra yeah. cost, yeah. 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 Thank you, Aaron. And Raina. All righty. Yes, um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, is silent is silent treatment also a complaint, I wonder, or a punishment? Or uh, can you complain by not speaking uh, where you uh, are expressing yourself without speaking that? So you're not actually voicing a complaint, but just um, being very silent. So the person knows that you're upset and complaining. Yeah. That yeah. So sense. you notice that one strategy we have to express our displeasure uh, with somebody else is that we stop talking, we stop communicating, and we might even distance ourselves from that person. And um, that might be uh, a, a, an alternative way to uh, complain. Uh, that makes sense to me because we're, you know, only a relatively small percentage of our communication is verbal. And most of our percent, mm. most of our communication is nonverbal. So when we go to 100% nonverbal like that, that's a big communication especially if it's delivered with, you know, crossed arms and, uh, and a furrowed brow. And, you know, uh, <clears throat> once I was with a friend and um, I was a relatively new NDC uh, trainer at the time. And uh, this particular friend uh, and I were in some kind of a conflict and they turned around, we were standing outside and they turned around and went into the house we were at and they slammed the door in my face. I took that as a remarkable um, communication. I was kind of centered enough in my own experience to be able to stand at the door, this door that had been closed in my face, and empathize with the closed door. The person wasn't there. 
but I could imagine what uh, what was going on in them that might um, stimulate them to want to close the door in my face and lock it. I imagine that they were feeling angry, maybe scared, uh, hurt perhaps, that they were wanting to protect themselves. And so once I got connected to the need, then my body relaxed and somehow I opened up to possibility. I wonder what I could do now. Well, maybe there's another way to get into this house. And I walked around to the other side of the house and sure enough, there's an unlocked door and I was able to go into the house and, and then eventually reconnect with the person uh, when they were ready. And so <clears throat> I'm with you that a silence can be um, a communication. Now you asked another question, which is more challenging. In fact, impossible to answer unless the person is here. You asked when the other person does that, are they punishing? Are they being punitive? And we can never tell that from outside. We can't tell what's going on in another. We can only interpret what the behavior means to us. So when that person closed the door in my face, I could uh, assume that they were trying to punish me, but that doesn't really help. What really helps me to stay connected is to assume that they were doing the best they could to get their needs met in that moment. And so that's that's kind of the way that I want to, to show up in the world when I can. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thank you. Sure. Thanks for asking. And uh, is it Vinay? Is that how you pronounce your name? Yeah, Vinay. Vinay. Go ahead. Uh, this is my first uh, session here in this. Thank you for the opportunity to share. For me, um, the entire idea of getting to notice what is happening in your body is pretty new. Um, it's so much taken for granted. Uh, there's an emotion and there is a reaction. But the idea that you slow down, look at what is happening in the body, notice the feeling, and then try to see what is the need that is triggering that feeling. Uh, the entire thing happening in, in a slow motion. It's like, for me, it is so quick, at least at this point, till this point of time, till the session. Um, but now I think it's... It's slowing down in my mind. It's slowing down, trying to notice and figure out. Is is that what happens, or is it another another way to understand how the body is feeling? Yeah, beautiful. I, I, your experience matches mine. That especially uh, in the beginning of my NVC practice, uh, the idea of connecting to my body uh, was. Um, um, sometimes impossible you know, to actually have the space between stimulus and response, um, to actually have some space. I would just see the, have the stimulus happen and I would react. I didn't take any time to be with my body. And with practice, 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 gradually over time, under cer certain in certain situations, I have that moment of self-reflection. And self-reflection and connecting to my body gives me more choice about how to respond. And so I kept looking for ways to practice um, connecting to the body um, because I figured if I'm only doing this practice when I'm upset, I'm getting in my own way. So I started focusing on other ways, other times to connect to uh, what was going on in my body. So I did all kinds of different strategies. I'll just name uh, two or three. One is, if you watch TV or listen to music or go to movies, um, set aside some period of time during that uh, entertainment experience to just notice your body, to notice what comes up in your body when you're listening to music or watching a show or a movie. So that's a safe place. No one's yelling at you. No one's, um, there's no drama other than the drama that's on the screen. So there's there's just a, a, a way to start building the, the skills to something happens, how, do my, how does my body respond? Something happens, how does my body respond? The other way that I'd do it would be um, um, when I was in a vehicle, whether it would be a car or a bus or whatever, and the vehicle would stop 
like for a red light or because of traffic in front. When the vehicle stopped, I took that as a signal for me to stop. And when I stopped to then turn my attention inward, how do I feel right now? And so that, that was a, a very powerful way of beginning to practice. Then the third way that I really recommend uh, to start getting in touch with the body is to focus on pleasant feelings. So notice when your needs are satisfied and open up to the possibility of feeling those feelings like the fullness of a meal, uh, the, the, the happiness of a connection with a friend, the thrill of a new insight, whatever it might be for you, whatever, anytime you notice um, a, a life affirming feeling, uh, slow down and take it in, let yourself experience that. Does that feel complete for you for now, Vinay? Vinay? Yes. Okay, great. Gustavo, then we'll move on to the next practice. Uh, thank you, Jim. And um, hi. <laughs> um, just to, to add real quick to the silent thing, and uh, I put it in the chat, but I want to make a comment for everybody that uh, I think the silence, and it happens to me a lot. Um, the strategy I'm using right now is to avoid. Um, reacting and help me to respond instead of reacting. I'm trying to practice silence and do my process internally. Like Marshall says, I'm leaving my jackals inside my head. And that helps me to release all of that energy. That is something similar that exercise that you just did. I did it, I do it in my head and it helps me to then when I release all, all of those jackals, then I make space to give me some self empathy, and then I can open myself to to the, um, to give empathy to the other person. Nice. So yeah. So if, if the silence is coming from that space, I think is is you can uh, recognize what is punishment or it's not. Yeah. Thank you. I'm really glad that you you've experimented with that. I, I did a similar experiment when I was um, a young um, NVC student what we call a baby giraffe, right? I was a baby giraffe and I noticed how many conflicts started because I started talking or I responded to somebody else. And so I did a similar practice that you did. I decided I would just keep my mouth shut unless another person made a request. I wouldn't do that all the time, but I would set aside some time every day uh, to just... Um, just notice that, it, like, like, let's say Jory and I were, would go out and take a walk, and she would be talking, and then, and then she would finish, but she wouldn't make a request. So I would take that as an opportunity to practice silent empathy, just to notice how my body felt. And then we'd walk some more, and then she would, she would talk, and and I would stay silent. And then finally, you know, maybe after the third time, she'd say, "How come you're being silent?" Okay, so there's a request. So I say, oh, so you're really curious about what's going on for me, why I'm being silent. And I would tell her about my experiment. And uh, so then there was a chance to, to connect about that. That really helped me a lot. So I'm glad you mentioned it, Gustavo. I'm glad to be reminded of that practice. Okay, so let's move on to the next practice. And we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna come back to that need sheet in just a second. We're going to, um, First, we're going to work on some self-empathy, some more self-empathy. Marshall had this term that he called spiritual clarity. He said it was one of the strategies or one of the important uh, essential elements of really integrating nonviolent communication, and he called it spiritual clarity. And so this has to do with um, clarity about um, uh, why we're doing what we do and who we're doing, who we are as we do it, and who we're doing it with. And Jory and I, uh, at the very first practice group we ever went to after learning uh, from Marshall, uh, there was a guy there that um, introduced this uh, concept called the zero step. Now that's nothing you'll ever find probably in, in uh, other, from NV, other NVC trainers, unless they've been training with us and they're, they're new. But we like this phrase, zero, the zero step, because it, there's really nothing to do in the zero step. So it's about really getting in contact with the spiritual clarity. And so um, it's what you do before you 
use nonviolent communication to connect with another person. So this is about connecting first with yourself. So the first question to consider as we move into this practice, we're about to do another practice and we're gonna do some writing in this part of the practice. So you're gonna be mostly connecting with yourself during this practice period and see if you can cultivate an intention to connect with yourself in the service of compassionate giving and receiving. And that, 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 that's the purpose that Marshall defined for nonviolent communication. The nonviolent communication is designed to support a quality of connection that inspires compassionate giving and receiving. So is that what you want right now? Do you wanna connect with yourself in a compassionate way? So that's the first inquiry, self-inquiry of the zero step. The second one, just notice, are you present and aware? If you're hearing the sound of my voice, clearly you're present and aware. If you're noticing that you're thinking about um, something else, well, you're present and aware to that. And then you might bring yourself back to the focus that you would like to have to do this practice. But just celebrate that you're a present and aware human being. And then think about not what happened in the past, but your focus is on from now on, on contributing to the world that you want to live in. And thirdly, see if you can open to outcome. Free yourself of any demands that things be different than they are, at least for the next five to six minutes. See what happens if you can inhabit the space of openness to outcome. So attune to yourself right now. Check your intention for this practice. And allow your heart to open the outcome. You don't know what's gonna happen next. So can you let it be a surprise? See what kind of gift life is about to give you? Now you're ready to practice. So you're in what we call zero now. You're, you're living to the best of your ability in this moment with spiritual clarity. Then think of a time when you heard somebody else complain. Could be a complaint about you, that would be a higher level of practice, but it doesn't have to be about you. If you really want an easy practice, just imagine that you're sitting next to somebody on the bus or the train or at work and you hear them complain. Something that you notice and you, you evaluate as a complaint. So think of a time when you heard another person's complaint and write down what did you see or hear and hear. This sounds like an easy request that I've made, but because of the way that we've been educated, it's really likely that um, it's not so easy to do because we have a habit of mixing up what we see and hear 
with what we think about what we see and hear. And so if you included any kind of evaluation about rightness or wrongness or goodness or badness or appropriateness or inappropriateness or anything like that, just cross that part out. So all that's left is that which could be experienced by your senses, your five senses. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. That's what makes it an observation. So I was with a friend, here's an example. I was with a friend and uh, this particular friend um, um, works with uh, another trainer that I know. And uh, you know they, they're like the, a support person for this other trainer. And it puts them in the position at, of really, uh, of, of handling a lot of like customer service issues. And I heard this other person express to me that they were confused and um, annoyed about something that was said to them um, when someone was wanting to talk about customer service. So notice that in my observation, there's no judgment. I just report, I, I heard um, this other person express that they were feeling confused and so forth. That's what I heard when I was with them. And then now we go back to the body. Nonviolent communication for me is a mindfulness practice. It's, it's centered in an experience of the body. The body is like the instrument that we have been given to navigate conflict and to enjoy life. So what do you notice in your body when you think about this complaint that you heard? For me, I, I noticed um, uh, some irritation, some sadness. I noticed kind of a, a, a gr gritting of my teeth um, feeling of helplessness. Someone wrote pain in the chat. If you want to write down these feelings in the chat, that can be very helpful, especially to new people, so that they know they're not alone. Whatever you feel is your feeling. So you're, it's a human feeling. Uneasy, anger, looking away, turning away, anxious, a constriction in my chest, annoyed. So we're getting both sensations and emotions, which is great. The, the, there's two kinds of channels here for feelings, just the raw sensations in our body and then the emotional experience that we add to it, like impatience or hurt. So be, take care here to not mix up an observation with a feeling. So stick only to what you notice in your body and it'll have nothing to do with what the other person says or does. So if there's anything in your feeling about the other person, let that go and just go back to noticing your own body. I 
I see your question, uh, Vinay, please, please ask it later because it's a great question and I want to just stick with the practice right now, but I, I want uh, to make sure to answer it. So help me remember. So what we're doing here is we're practicing the three uh, kind of elements of self-empathy. First, you notice what's going on in your body. Then you name it. By giving a name to your emotional experience, it really supports you in regulating being more present to, to your uh, experience. It opens up the possibility of, uh, of moving forward from now on into something that can meet more needs with less cost. So noticing is the first step, naming it's the second step, and then allowing yourself to feel the feelings. Many of us have been educated that we're, we shouldn't feel feelings. Big boys don't cry, have a stiff upper lip, don't be so needy. We get all kinds of messages like that. And now NVC, we're undoing all of that. We're making it okay to feel our body. Some of us have trouble feeling our body because of things that have happened to us that have been painful. And we check our body and we don't notice anything. And I call that numb. So I would notice that I don't feel anything in my body. I name it numb and then allow myself to feel numb. And there's no correct list of feelings. You might go to some NVC training and somebody gives you a list and says, these are feelings and these aren't feelings. That could be useful <clears throat> for some learning, learning experiments and so forth. <clears throat> but I trust you to name your feelings. You know what you mean more than I do. And so please trust yourself. Don't trust me or some other trainer to tell you what you feel. Trust yourself. And then comes the magic, the magic that NVC offers, which is rather than doing our habit of blaming our feelings on what the other person did, we're going to link the feeling to our need. So write down a sentence that looks like this. I feel, and then put those sensations and emotions into the blank. because I need. And then I'm gonna put the needs chart up in just a second, but first I'll tell you my example. <laughs> Excuse me. I feel irritated, annoyed, helpless, because I need, I need to look at the list here just for clarity and remembering this observation. I'm wanting, I'm needing support, consideration, care. So those are the needs that are alive in you, in me. What's alive in you? If you've already connected to your needs, then savor them. I'll say a little bit more about savoring, but I want to just create a little bit more space for people to, especially new people, to look at this list if it's helpful or look in your own nervous system to find the words that describe what's important to you. What do you value? couple of other ways to look at what, what this, this concept in NBC means needs. What's important to you right now? What do you value? So 
So as you connect to the need, savor it. Savoring means to extend the pleasure of something. So needs, another word for needs that Marshall uh, Rosenberg, the founder of nonviolent communication used was um, uh, beautiful or beloved divine energy. So it's like our connection to uh, the spirit of the whole universe. It's the living energy within us that motivates us to do what we do. We feel hungry because we need food. We feel tired because we need rest. And if I'm feeling hungry, but I don't have access to food in the moment, because maybe I'm stuck in a place where uh, I, I can't get food at the moment or something's up for me, whatever. And so I feel hungry and maybe frustrated because I need um, sustenance, nutrition. But even if I'm not with the opportunity to get food in that moment, I can savor the need. I can experience a sense of appreciation that this need exists in me to motivate me to look for food. It's so deep in me. I, it is a gift given to me by my ancestors uh, a million years ago, 10 million years ago. So I want to appreciate that gift by savoring the need. And then as you savor, see if you can come up with a request. What might make your life more wonderful? This is um, a natural part of being human too, to make requests, to notice that something's missing and take steps to make it happen. And sometimes we make a request of ourselves and sometimes we make a request of other people. In this case, see if you can connect to a request for yourself. So I, here I am back in my observation again. I hear this person uh, complaining about their uh, work life. I feel the sense of frustration and helplessness in me. And then I savor my need for um, well-being. That's the new need that comes up this time when I go through it. I really long for well-being. What can I do about it? How could I support well-being? Well, I could ask myself, am I in zero? Do I want to connect? Could I possibly um, open my heart with some curiosity to what's going on for this other person? Those are all things that I can do. So these are requests I can make of myself. What could you ask of yourself? I, I see what Kay wrote in the chat. I'm back to the chat now. I feel sad and, and hurt because I need um, gentleness, care, warmth, connection, and respect. Yeah. So you might have questions now. You might've got hung up somewhere in the practice. That's natural part of the process. Uh, and I could sit here and answer all your questions, but it'd probably be so much more fun and uh, connecting if you went back to small groups and um, and chatted about it with friends. And so we'll do it for a little longer this time to give more of a chance to uh, connect. And so the idea is uh, we'll, you'll get 15 minutes this time, 15 minutes plus one. And this will be your chance to express your own experience of this exercise. So everybody has five minutes. It'd probably be great to have a timekeeper, especially since somebody ran out of time uh, last time. So somebody volunteered to be the timekeeper and then gently just let the person know that the time is up and then move on to the, finish their thought. 
and then uh, move on to the next person. So you might want to do that at four minutes and 30 seconds so that everybody has a little space to finish and then move on to the next thing. So just be gentle with each other. Just again, a chance to practice empathy and honesty. Do a round of three. If you get finished, then go around again. It's something deeper might come out. I rearranged some of the groups because I knew some languages. Sometimes it's helpful to practice in your own language. So I made a couple of guesses about language. And if I didn't guess right, just keep working in English. And then I'll see you guys back here in uh, 15 minutes. Okay, here we go. Hey, everybody be back in about uh, 10 seconds or so. Zoom. Here we are. So I'd love to hear from a few people about what you've learned. So before we do that, take one minute and write down your own harvest. What do I mean by a harvest? A harvest is like a takeaway. We've been together now for an hour and 45 minutes, and hopefully you've taken something away. You've found something valuable for yourself. Write down what you learned. What was valuable for you today? So I'll check in with you in one minute. I see your hand, Patricia. We'll go. Thank you for raising it. Be right with you. What did you learn today? And if you have discovered a takeaway, imagine how you'll use it from now on. How can you commit to using what you learned today from now on? Another minute to consider that. How will you use what you learned today in your relationships? If you need more time to keep writing these requests of yourself, please take it. In the meantime, I'd like to hear from Patricia. And then if you'd like to be heard too, please raise your hand like Patricia did. Patricia. Um, yes, Jim. Um, what I'm taking away is that labeling something when I hear, when I am in a dialogue with someone and I label what I hear a complaint, that is what stops the dialogue. Yeah. It's my labeling it as a complaint. Yeah, and see, yeah. 
yeah and that's 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 where the crux for me of the issue is especially in political discussions if the person has an opinion um divergent from mine i may label it complaint and disconnect or i can choose to be interested in their point of view but most of the time if it's different, it's, an, it's not right. <laughs> so it's the initial, how do I initially label what I'm hearing? And once I go down that rabbit hole, I'm done with. It yeah. just, there's no, no coming back from it. Yeah, so what I catch is that you really are connected to how much power you have with your own language in terms of how you respond to others. If you diagnose them as a, a complainer or if you diagnose them as, you know, divergent or whatever, whatever the complaint is that you notice in yourself, that disconnects you from them and closes down an opportunity for connection. Yeah. Beautiful. Very much. Yeah. Thank you. And Gustavo. Well, I don't have anything else to say, Patricia, because I want to be to say exactly, exactly, exactly the same what you said about that. I was realizing, yes, reflecting about, yes, if, if we say that it's a complaint, immediately you are labeling it and you're you're closing the, the possibility of hearing anybody. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah, if you hear with, with giraffe ears, is is different because then you can hear it as a as an expression of need. So yeah, thank you, Patricia. And thank you, Jim, for putting me with with uh, a Venezuelan person in my group with uh, Karimar. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. I figured you guys would have fun meeting each other. I have power over. I get to create the group. So I, I have fun being <laughs> uh, the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. Yeah. And um, uh, Carolyn. Okay, I'm in, unmuted. <laughs> um, so what I found is um, I feel as though it would be extremely um, helpful for me. Um, fr just from this exercise at the end here, um, where I felt before the exercise, I was really thinking, how can I possibly um, run any kind of conversation? I mean, uh, try to uh, have a conversation that would be utilizing MVC that would be, um, that I would know what I was doing and how, how would it be helpful for us and in a relationship. And, um, and then when, what, what happened was when I saw my need, which is really for connection and compa compassionate giving and receiving, really. And um, I then to make the request of myself. So I don't think I've ever thought of it that way. It's always more like, what well, am I requesting from the other person? So when, at first it kind of stumped me. And then I thought, oh, well, what if I was willing to open my heart to this person? and imagine what is going on for them. And that just changed the whole thing completely. <laughs> so my whole feeling about it, I, I just feel confidence and, and, and just a one big, a big yes, that that would allow me to be in a place where I would be able to hear this other person with an open heart and, and listen to him. And I, think um that i could perhaps <laughs> there may be some stumbles but and it wouldn't be the most perfect nvc <laughs> which i know doesn't need to be that's so well, um thank you I, that, that's a beautiful a beautiful walk that you took to find your own power that was the whole point of the whole class so thank you for uh, summarizing it and highlighting it but this is how we regain the power that we might have given up. Thank you. And uh, okay. Jean Marie. I was, um, what I learned today was, uh, or maybe it's more of an 
affirmation of what I know and want a value is how important it is to be present in the here and now. I, I say that because I came in late. I think I missed most of the content. And yet I had a need to learn and to be connected. So I felt a little sad that I wasn't able to join from the beginning. However, in the group, I just went with the flow of the being present to the here and now and learned to uh, open myself and have deep listening. And I left the group with a lot of gratitude, really a sense of gratitude because my need to be connected, the feeling of the sadness um, kind of just transcended. I mean, I felt the flow and the space and beauty um, that happened. And I'm so grateful. And that was expressed even with the other two in the group. Um, so uh, learning to be present to the here and now, it might get so um, confused or wanting so much content, a lot of stuff, let that go. Let that go and something else will inspire and bring forth. That's what I wanted to see. So thank you. Thank you. And then Fernie. Listen, you have to unmute. Yeah, you haven't you haven't quite unmuted yet, Bernie. We can't hear you yet. Oops, wrong button. You'll get it there, but there you go. Okay, sorry. I just didn't know how to unmute um on my phone. Um okay, so I just want to express the gratitude for for like everybody tonight. I am very new. This is my second time attending the meeting. I found the meeting actually by accident um, last week. <laughs> accident. Um, and it's I'm I'm learning so much and I, I just feel so much support from the group. And I ask myself if I if attending the ITT, I IITs are would be beneficial um and i think i found the answer tonight so thank you i just wanted to say that you're you're welcome i'm really glad you're here i'm glad you're getting value uh, uh from it and uh, i hope some of you can join me uh, at an iit this year i'll be in joy and i will be in bali uh, in october and i hope to see many of you from this practice group there and um, finish up with Cecilia, then I've got a few announcements and some. Uh, I've got a few questions that I wrote down from the chat that I hope to have time to answer as well. Cecilia? Uh, thank you, Jim. So I have a question. I hope it's not going to take too long. But what I'm realizing is that sometimes, like when I hear complaints, I hear evaluations. And there's a part of me that wants to support that person to get grounded on observations. Like, for instance, someone says, well, this person always do that. And I was like, oh, no, there was that last time. And that person did not do that because I was trying to be some, of course, that doesn't help. <laughs> but um, I think I think I'm sensing, I, I mean, I just. I think I, I mean, I don't know. I want to hear any wisdom from you. I mean, I'm what I'm thinking is okay, but just like bypass that and go straight into like needs because, of course, feelings sometimes are hard to for for people to hear and navigate that. So I bypass all of that and go straight into needs. Uh, happy to hear any any reflections, but. Um, there's a part of me that is annoyed in seeing evaluations now. <laughs> yes, yes, I get it. I get it. This is a pitfall of nonviolent communication practice is we start getting something out of the practice. And then we have a story. Um, this all happens usually pretty subconsciously. And it's really super common. In fact, I've never talked to anybody who doesn't have this happen, 
then we get the idea that other people should become NVC practitioners, whether they want to or not. And so then we start becoming their coach. And then, then we have the experience that you talked about where it really doesn't help. And so uh, I was really helped in my own um, growth uh, by Marshall because uh, something similar came up at a workshop and I asked him a very similar question to you. Um, uh, and uh, uh, Marshall put these ears on like this. These are giraffe ears if you've never seen them before. This is what Marshall used to, to um, um, be a metaphor for uh, nonviolent communication consciousness. And Marshall said, <clears throat> when I have these ears on, I can't hear a complaint. That really went deep for me. I thought about it for a long, I, it, it just stopped my whole mind. It was like a moment of, oh, right. It's in me. It's just like somebody said earlier, if I label it a complaint, then I can get myself disconnected. If I label it, oh, this is a person expressing their feelings and needs. Oh, well, that's a whole, a whole different experience. Then I have different choices that I can make. Does that make sense, Cecilia? Yes, yes, thank you. I think it's it's reminding me of that expression that um, everything everyone is always saying is either please or thank you. And the question for me is like, what is the please? I, I just think I need to stick that into my head. <laughs> what is the please? <laughs> yes, and that's actually why we, Jory and I started using the word complaint. Because if you think about the word complaint, it has this um, uh, it has the this part of the word. Uh, the first part is com, which is to, means together, right? It's like holding something together. Then plaint sounds like someone being plaintive. They're saying please. They're saying please. So they're saying please with me when they complain. Well, that's a whole different frame on what a complaint is. The other person's not saying that anything's wrong. They just want some company in their pain. So that, that really helped me to get that as well. Thanks, Cecilia. And I see two more hands up. Let me go through the other little pieces in case people need to go. Um, I'm gonna share my screen and do something I've never done before because uh, someone asked me to share uh, the feelings list. And so um, you guys see the Pathways to Liberation website right now? Is that what you see on your screen? Great. Okay, so if you go to pathwaystoliberation.com, <clears throat> Um, you end up here. Uh, this is just, it's a pretty simple website. We tried to keep it uh, as low, low tech as possible so that it would be accessible for people with slower internet. And so then if you create, if you click on recordings, it opens up. And uh, at the top of the recording page are some, these, some of these basic handouts that we use every week. So you can get your own needs list or mandala. You can get the feelings list here. My feelings list is a little bit different than others that you might have seen uh, because it links the feelings to the needs. Not that it's always this way, but um, it, it can be very helpful, especially when, when, learning, um, when learning the feelings list, uh, how the feelings are related to needs. So we feel hungry, thirsty, cold, tired, envy, and fearful when our need for survival is not being met. And when the need is satisfied, we feel sated, quenched, warm, rested, content, and serene, and so forth. So I did that with the 10, uh, the 10 basic needs that we use on our list. And so that's one way of uh, learning some needs, uh, some feelings and needs vocabulary. And that's on our website at pathwaystoliberation.com. Okay, stop sharing again now. And now I wanna put some links into the chat. <clears throat> um, every week we do record these calls. That's one way that you can get them is by going to that, uh, that website. You can also get them on YouTube. So I'll put two links here for how to get to the recordings. Um, oops.
So that's uh, how you get to the recordings. Um, <clears throat> if you're if you're brand new and you want to be on our email list so that you find out what we're going to do next week, <clears throat> you can follow this link and join our email list. We send out uh, usually one thing per week, usually on Sunday, <clears throat> usually Sunday morning. I was a little late this week. And then um, people say, gosh, Jim, uh, I'd like you contributed something to me. I'd like to contribute to you as well. And so if you have a need for contrib contribution and you'd like to meet it, you can PayPal me some money. Uh, uh, it goes to me and Jory. And then we use that money that we receive from you for NBC projects. So we supported uh, Amina, who's here on the call once before with a project in the Philippines. Maybe we can get her to talk about it um, soon. Probably not today because we're already a little late today. Um, but we also raised some money for uh, Suda in India for that uh, mentoring and assessment and NBC convention thing. So that's what we do with the money that you send us. We use it to, to support our mission of spreading NBC around the world. And let's see here, tax season is finished. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Jory is probably ready to make some appointments if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one call or, or explore a mediation. With somebody you could go to Jory's uh, you can book me and we do that she does that kind of work on a compassionate giving and receiving basis as well so that's enough links for today <laughs> if you got to go please leave but I do want to answer these other uh, other two questions here um, uh, Vinia uh, asked aren't emotions judgmental and so what, what I take away from your question is um, the, that you're really getting to see the relationship between our judgments and our emotions. This is particularly clear with anger. And soon we'll do another class on anger, where you get to see that uh, the judgments we have uh, really contribute to certain um, very strong emotions that we have, like anger, rage, um, um, disappointed, um, um, shame, guilt, depression, and so forth, anxiety. All of these are very much related to um, the kind of judgments that we have about ourselves or about others. And they can really um, generate a strong emotional feeling in our body. So that's the quick and easy answer to that. And then um, someone asked, uh, gosh, you know, it sounds great to have this space for self-connection, you know, before I open my mouth and but I'm taking my time and I'm connecting with my body like we do in the practice. How do I do that in real life? And uh, the answer to that question is practice, practice, practice. And sometimes you'll be able to, and sometimes you won't be able to, and that's okay. You just, you're just gradually stretching. It's taking you 20, 30, 40, 50 years to be educated how not to do that, how to just react. And so now we're going to take some time, some training to retrain your brain, uh, how to uh, respond with more space. So it's just practice. I think those are all the questions that were on my list. So <clears throat> I see two more hands, and then I'll reopen the small groups for people to say goodbye to one another or hang out afterwards. So Juliana, are you still here? Yes, I'm here. I have not put on my thing because internet is unstable. So, uh, Jim, you said from complaint to commitment. I really got clearly about uh, what complaint is and what is the commitment that you're moving to commitment to kind of what? Can you just be a little clear for me on yeah. that, please? Yeah, so the, the last step in the process was coming up with a request to yourself. And in the world yeah. that I want to live in, we commit to the requests that we make of ourselves. So we're making a commitment to do our part to build a, a world uh, of our choosing. So uh, if I notice that a need yeah. or connection is not being met, and I come up with a request that I think is going to support that need, then I'm committing to trying that strategy and, uh, and certainly staying con connected, to, uh, connected and committed to the need. That's what I want. I want to live in a world where people are committed to needs. Does that make sense, Juliana? Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Harmony? Yeah, hi. So I'm on the um, the website that you said that um, on your screen share that you were saying is on your website. Um, 
and I don't really see where to find that um, last screen share you put up. I want to okay. I want to find it. I'll show you again. Let me go back. <clears throat> so, yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. So the way you get that, I'll just start at the very beginning again, just for clarity. If you have the question, mm -hmm. other people probably have. So um, you're at the main website, which is Pathways to Liberation. This is what opens up if you put Pathways to Liberation .com <clears throat> into your browser, right? Then, yep. you, then you click on the word recordings. Okay. <clears throat> and then that page loads up. And then at the very top, this says basic handouts for learning and practicing nonviolent communication at the top. And then there's there's a few basic handouts. Each of those words links to uh, a PDF file. And so the feelings list is the one, first is the needs list, then the feelings list. You see it there? Yeah, but where was the one that you had? So if I click on that feelings list on my computer anyway, okay. it, will, it will open up that PDF or it will download the feelings list into your, um, depending on how you have your computer set up, it may just download this into your download file. But if you click on, uh, the, okay, okay, yep, yep, and yep, thank you. You're welcome. And Bob's your uncle, as they say. Okay, <laughs> and um, it seems like there's one more question here. Um, Sarah Joy. Hi, Jim. Um, thank you so much for this class. And I'm sorry, I came in late as well. Um, I was on a, a different kind of call. It's we're remembering all the people who died in the Holocaust. And I was on a couple of those meetings, but I didn't want to miss this as well. Um, so I'm glad I came. Um, one of the things that I'm taking away is your beautiful definition of needs that I hadn't heard before, which is um, that needs are beautiful, beloved divine energy. And um, when I, Put that with the question that was asked about feelings um, that are aren't feelings just judgments or something like that um, i remembered that one of my teachers said that actually a feeling is um, coming directly from the divine source and um, trying to get you to pause and stop and connect with your deeper self mm -hmm. so i i kind of liked that um, <laughs> being able to say well what's my deeper self it's maybe this beautiful beloved divine energy within me yeah. and maybe within the other person but first i have to connect with it in me so i thank you for that you're very welcome and i, I give marshall credit for uh, that de de definition beautiful divine or beloved divine energy he has a little teeny tiny book <clears throat> called practical spirituality and um, so, you know, it's only like 30 pages or 40 pages long. And that's where uh, where he talks a little bit about his his uh, what he means when he's talking about creating spiritual clarity. So I recommend that book <clears throat> doing a Thank series. You. You're very welcome. I'm doing a series of classes on the first Friday of the month. Uh, and we're we're using that book as the text. And uh, there'll, there'll be little notes in the in the handout. I mean, in the um, weekly in the in the weekly mailing when another one of those comes up in a couple of weeks. All right, thank you all for being here. I hope Jory's back with us next week. I really appreciate all that you guys are doing to create um, a more nonviolent and um, um, the world that we want to live in. So thanks for being here. I really appreciate your uh, engagement your willingness to practice, your willingness to share. I loved hearing new voices today. That was really exciting for me. So thank you for uh, creating uh, the courage to come and speak out in front of uh, a bunch of people. Thank you very much. And I'll reopen the small groups now. If your person, if the people in your small group are already gone, then just hang out there for a minute. I'll put some more people in with you in just a second. And uh, so see you all next week. Aloha, bye-bye.